Welcome to Red Dot Logic's YouTube channel. I want to introduce Nova Star's H series uh, processors. H series processors are new line of processors that Nova Star is coming out with. I have a, my hands on a demo and I cannot wait to introduce you guys to it. Uh, H series video processors are specially designed for fine pixel pitch products which require a lot more input outputs especially for a corporate environment uh, for permanent installs as well as festivals uh, it mixes together video splicing and sending cards all into one unit with a super high reliability using industry standards they've managed to get a modular design with the FPGA architecture uh, extremely low latency very stable operation real 4k inputs using rgb444 color processing there is absolutely zero frame rate loss on this uh, and there is also zero grayscale loss it uses 10-bit input as well as 10-bit output it also uses hdr and a 3d technology as well it virtually solves all of our dynamic tearing problems that our industry has been having for generations. Uh, multiple 4K processors onto one screen, we have seen those tears. And this will fix that problem because, get this, one H9 unit can handle up to 52 million pixels on the output side. That is correct, 52 million pixels is 80 Ethernet outputs to go to your LED screen. And you can use virtually any input signals, everything from composite, VGA, SDI, um, DVI, HDMI, single link, dual link DVIs. Um, then you got HDMI 1.3, 1.4, and HDMI 2.0, as well as DisplayPort 1.2, which covers everything from SD all the way up to 4K at 60. It has super low latency on it. It's visibly seamless on the actual LED screen signals. High quality video output. Also has a gen lock and a network control. Now without further ado, let's jump into it and I'll introduce all the models to you guys. The first model we're gonna look at is H2. H2 can handle up to 20.8 million pixels. That's correct, 20.8 million pixels, and this is the smallest one in the series. So now, when we look at the back plane, you can see you can add two 4K output cards, you can add three input cards, each card capable of 4K. Uh, next one up in the series is H5, that can handle up to 31.2 million pixels. This model can handle up to three output cards on a 4K LED screen as well as the multi-viewer card and you have 10 input cards each input card is again capable up to 4k at 60 and the biggest one out of all of them is model h9 which can handle up to 52 million pixels which has 10 input card slots as well as five output card slots and uh, plus the mvr card multi-viewer card has two power supplies and everything else that you can possibly want for a permanent install screen now let's take a look at our input card options we have a dvi input cards which are single link as well as dual link then you have hdmi 1.3 card and 1.4 combined with that uh, below that you have hdmi 2.0 card with the display port 1.2 which is a 4k card below that you have a 12g sdi input card with the loop out below that we have a 3g sdi card uh, below that we have IPC card which can handle your security cameras and uh, encoder feeds coming in over the network. Uh, below that we have a DisplayPort 1.1 card. And below that finally VGA and analog which I don't know who still uses that but it's still available as an option in case if you need it. Looking at our output cards, each output card can have up to 16 uh, Ethernet output RJ45 outputs with the two optical outputs right next to it. Uh, there's also multi-viewer card as you can see below that with the two Ethernet inputs. Um, and the multi-viewer goes over network to your web browser. 
uh, with the HDMI 1.3 output as well. You have a gen lock, Ethernet for communications, two USB ports for, uh, for uh, backup and software updates, uh, RS-232 on the comm, and then dual power supply system. And of course there's a power switch in the back as well. As you can see, I have one control system being detected and the other devices, there's one. So we can take a look right here what we got in the other devices. And you can see there is a HMVR card, which is a multi-viewer card, which also uses uh, Ethernet port on your network to transmit the Ethernet, uh, to transmit the feeds of all the uh, sources over Internet or over your local network to your software. We'll go ahead and take a look at that soon, but let's go ahead and go into our screen configuration and take a look at the major changes right here. So right here on this page, uh, if you look at it, there is a hot backup verification. You can verify that and then there is a set working mode. Set working mode, if you click on that, you get this little pop-up window and you can set. So there's four sending cards right now that are on my H9 and I'm gonna go ahead and show you if you wanted to set that as a backup you would just select one or two or many whatever you need to do to set them primary or backup or copy straight from here uh, I'm not gonna do that right now I only have one L small LED screen connected right now to port one right here so and I went ahead and mapped it out as I would with any other Nova Shark screen send it to hardware click OK save and you're good to go so the only thing that has changed on this end is how you set up your packups as soon as we're done with this I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys on their newest web GUI interface that they have for this processor which I'm absolutely in love with so here it is you just type in literally an IP address of the processor which is displayed on the front screen uh, if you don't know, you can always go ahead and search it. Uh, you have to be on the same network, obviously, to communicate on anything. Uh, it does have a USB connection as well, which only works for the software Nova LCT. It does not work for this GUI, so you would absolutely need to have a network interface. In this day and age, if you're not using network, I don't know what you're doing. So, let's go in. Uh, through right here on the welcome screen our default username and password is admin and you can go ahead and change that through the settings here um, but let's go ahead and take a look at our settings so first up is EDID management and you can see that all the sources that are connected are showing up green here anything that's not connected is grayed out uh, there's inputs and there's outputs I have four output 4k cards in there uh, which are 16 ports of Ethernet on each one of them with two optical outputs if you want to use the CVT 4Ks for the fiber extension system You can use this straight out of this card Another benefit that they've added on this card is you can use the actual Ethernet output as primary and you can set up uh, fiber outputs as your backup and you can use the CVT 4K to get a backup off of the same exact card which is doubling up your capacity at this point. Um, let's take a look at the EDID management input output. You can change your EDIDs through a drop down menu or sliders right here. Change your refresh rate. You can click advance if you really know what you're doing. If you have a good calculator, you can obviously go ahead and try this out for custom EDIDs. Or you can import and export EDIDs as well here. The next up is IPC management. Now what the IPC management does is they have created the newest uh, cards which take in Ethernet ports. Again, goes on your network. Uh, IPC is IP protocol uh, for cameras usually or encoders and decoders which can also handle up to 4K at 60. Uh, it would be streaming off of a RTSP feed. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, if you've ever used a uh, HDMI encoder or uh, IP cameras you would know what that is basically it streams a video feed onto a website on the local network IP address website and you can copy that IP link into here and you can add in your security cameras or your sources coming from media servers or 
playback systems or ad servers. And that is a great new feature that's been added on this particular um, family of processors. Then you have user management where you can do up to 2,000 users and you can give them different um, uh, you can give them different permissions to do whatever you want them to do or whatever you don't want them to do you can take those permissions away so they could be allowed to add sources or whatever configure modules and stuff like that but let's say if you don't want them to mess with EDID management you can just take that out from that user so you can do up to 2,000 users which is a huge help especially on a corporate networks and stuff uh, if you're using it in permanent installs uh, then you have a backup management where you can plug in a USB drive on flash drive or something onto your unit itself and you can back up the entire settings of the whole processor before the show or whatever just to keep a ba extra backup in case if you need to update it later uh, then you have export configuration file which you can export a file onto your local computer Right after that we have communications uh, which is your IP settings and then your serial ports. So this you can communicate with over serial as well. I'm not going to talk about that at all since I feel like that's super outdated and nobody should be using that. However if you're doing RS-232 feeds on the network, here's your settings. Then here's your firmware upgrade. You can just simply browse for a firmware. I have a couple of firmwares here that I've gone through in the last few days. Um, and 1.1.4 is the latest one that they've come out with and we've tried this on and almost I want to say 95% of the unit is perfect there's still little improvements to be made but to be fair this is still in a prototype stage then you got uh, reset if you wanted to reboot or reset a whole device or whatever then you have some other settings right here for performance playback video streaming in the editing area, enable gen lock. So if you're ever using a gen lock to tie your unit with other camera systems or uh, such things, here's your gen lock uh, enable checkbox. And this truly does use your gen lock as a sync signal for all the sources to sync your outputs with your screen. About us, you'll find uh, website and uh, no stars tech support. Um, uh, email address if you need to ever reach out to them you can download a log which ha contains the files of exactly what you've done and what your show looks like in order for them to troubleshoot a little bit better next up you got a device so here's a graphical interface of exactly what's going on with your device this is what I've populated and it automatically populates it so you don't have to worry about that if you swap out HDMI card from here to here it'll automatically move that all of these cards are hot swappable However, as always, I don't recommend doing it. Uh, it does have two power supplies at the bottom, as you can see. You got Genlock input, Genlock output, your Ethernet for communication. USB 1 and 2 are primarily for your firmware upgrades or a backups, uh, if you're saving a whole system backup. And then you have RJ45 input, output for communication over serial. Uh, then you have a self-test here, if you wanted to output a test pattern. You can take a look at that. It shows you your temperatures, fan control, voltage, uh, all that seems normal. Then with the input cards we have, uh, this one is the HD inputs for HDMI 1.3 and 1.4. The one next to it is DVI single links. Uh, the one next to that you have HDMI 2.0 with the display port 1.2. So both of these are capable of doing 4K at 60. And you can decide to use either or. Right next to that I have an IPC card, which is the one uh, for security cameras as well as encoder uh, feeds coming in. Then I have a few empty slots. I do not have SDI card yet, it should be available soon. So on the output ports you have uh, 11 through 20 that are your output ports. So you can do up to 5 of these cards, I only have 4 popped in right now into this processor. And you can see LED screen is plugged in on number one. Uh, I only have a small LED screen that I have uh, plugged in at my house. You got two optical output ports and you can use the existing CVT 4 case for that. Now the best thing about this card that they have done is you can actually use this on an 8-bit mode or 10-bit mode. 
if you use it on an 8-bit mode per port you have 650,000 pixels uh, overall this processor itself is capable of handling 52 million pixel output that's right 52 million pixels that's 5 4k processors or 22k processors and you can do backup you can do primary off of the actual cat5 outputs or rg45 plugs outputs and then the fiber output cvt 4k you can use that as a backup which is the newest feature that they've added on this uh, particular processor. Then we're gonna like, take a look at our multi-viewer page. So on the multi-viewer page right here, you have your screen outputs, you have your inputs coming in. And if you just do only view inputs with signal, you can see all of these inputs that are coming in with signal. And if you're using the input in here already in the multi-viewer, it's grayed out. But if you were to take it out of here, for example, if I was to just delete that off, you can see that one changed co to color instead of black and white. Which means now this one is available for you to drag and drop into any one of the other slots. Um, right now the screen one and screen two, I don't have going anything out of it, so you won't be able to see it yet. Uh, let's take a look at our programming. So on the programming page, you have your presets. Uh, you can go up to almost, I want to say about 2,000 presets. That's correct, 2,000 presets is your limit. And your presets are right here. You can save your different layouts and stuff. Input signals, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys some stuff here. So we can just quickly drag and drop and you'll see the feed get populated with the live feed that's coming in. Obviously this is not gonna show you 60 frames a second because this is streaming online or over the internet through the MVR card and this is in the web browser remember this is not an actual video monitor so you are gonna see some lags you're gonna see the signals break up but it gives you a confidence monitor straight on a web browser which is a huge improvement and once you get it to manipulate the layers you can literally just drag and drop or you can actually type in the pixel offsets pixel numbers height width all through right here at the bottom corner you can also do a layouts so if I did a two by two layouts I only have three sources in here right now so you can see that just populated on its own but you can go ahead and select the different sources for them and I don't have a PC uh, connection right now so I'm not gonna be able to give you the fourth signal so I'll just drag a regular another one into there So now with a few of this, uh, let me go ahead and start Arena here, which is the extended monitor that you're seeing on there. And I'll go ahead and do advance, save and close. I'm gonna put a test card out so you guys can see the test card signal right there. And like I said, this is just a preview to show you exactly what's going on. This is not by any means a pixel perfect or a frame perfect uh, visualization here that you're looking at. Uh, now taking at the few good things here. So let's say if this is one of the presets that you like, you can go ahead and save this as a preset here. Name it whatever you like. I'm going to leave it at preset 1. Click OK. Um, then let's say if I deleted off one of these and I extended this layout all the way through and if I want to save this as my preset 2 go ahead and do that and you can hit clear which will clear out everything on your output now you see this cut right here if you don't have the cut on this gives you a preview and a preset basically so if I bring in a preset one again now this is not going on my output monitor so how do I know that if you go into multi viewer you can see the screen one is not showing anything going back into programming we can go now it is going to the output and you should be able to see that here And if we were to change to preset 2 on this one now, um, 
Let's see. Preset two, and you should be able to see that make a change. Sorry, I do have to click cut synchronously, and that basically takes that feed to the output. And you can see that right there. Uh, in the configuration page is where you have your output. So you can make multiple screens here. I've made two 4K screens. I have four cards available. So there's two that are not being used and you can see that by not being grayed out. And you can change the settings of those cards with a test pattern or whatever. So if you want to send out a test pattern to one of them, you just have to check enable, output, and if you look at your multi-viewer, you should be able to see red now. Again, if you go back in here, select my screen 2, test pattern, and let's do a grid, scrolling grid on there. And I'm going to play with a little bit of settings here to lower down the speed, lower down the stuff so we can see that better on a multi-viewer output. And you can see that scrolling grid. Then the other options you have is a uh, background. You can upload a background image once you enable that. Then there's the OSD, on-screen display. If you enable that, you can see this welcome screen going scrolling across. You can type in whatever text you want. I don't know how many times this would be useful, but for emergency purposes, this could be very useful. I'm gonna go ahead and disable that. So once you enable it, you have to do have to click apply there. You can also do on-screen display image. So if you have an image you want to upload here, let me see if I can get you guys some. Just any random image. I just pulled up something. So there you go. And you can manipulate the size of that on exactly how big you want that to be. You can check the opacity on it as well. Again, not sure if this is useful, but for branding purposes, maybe somebody would want to use that. Then you have a brightness control here for that output of that screen. So we have two screen displays going out each card you have its own brightness control going out to the LED screens uh, which is very convenient then you have a freeze option which would completely freeze up the interface here and on the LED screen uh, even if it's a video coming in it freezes that video then you have fade to black again very useful for emergency purposes um, if your system's crashed or if your media servers have crashed you can always fade to black, black so nobody else can see that. Then you have another interesting feature called preset playback and you can add all the presets that you have into this little playlist or whatever one you want to add. How long do you want to play each one for? Let's lower that down to five seconds, click OK. And now if I hit play on that you can see it's gonna go from the four window to three window every five seconds on its own and it's locked me out from changing anything on the program window there so you can see that just changed up and it will go back to four window again in a few seconds so it stays on for about five seconds and then it keeps switching back and forth as you can see um, it's a great feature if you have a multiple um, camera feeds or something that you're trying to switch through and if it's being used in the control uh, room environment uh, for security cameras or monitoring security cameras or stuff it's perfect for that and you can create your own custom presets that way and the signal inputs obviously we already looked at this uh, let me see if I'm missing anything so if you wanted to do something on screen too I can I'm just gonna bring this one up and go full screen and that's what we're gonna see on the multi viewer for the screen two. Oh, sorry, we do have a test pattern running which takes priority. So we can go ahead and disable the test pattern. And that should be working. There you go. So we got a source at screen two. For multi viewer, you can 
you have a bunch of uh, little presets down here as well or you can customize your own uh, if you're customizing it I don't know if you want to do 4x2 for example it will just automatically go ahead and make its own little setup and then you can just drag and drop the sources that you're using so I have a 2-1 in use, 3-1 in use and 4-1 in use again if you don't know which ones you're using you can always just click on that and it'll tell you which sources are coming through and that's pretty much about it in the settings there is a little bit more features you can uh, play around with even on the device itself you can click on the card and configure something right here on next to us here so if you wanted to change up certain things like single link to dual link and stuff like that it's very useful if you want to switch from HDMI 2.0 to display for 1.2 there's a little checkbox right there um, but there is a lots and lots of features this controller is filled with a lot of stuff it's a great processor for the installs as well as the festivals um, I know I'd be using it on many many projects coming up uh, hopefully once we get out of this pandemic we can all get back to work and that's it on this software side of things guys <laughs>